So my thesis first. All cryptocurrency marketing is marketing it as a get-rich-quick scheme. Now, get-rich-quick schemes logically don't exist. If someone says, fear of missing out, YOLO, get in, not going to make it. All get-rich-quick schemes are lies. This should be obvious, but somehow it isn't to a lot of people. My second point is proof-of-work cryptocurrency mining, as used by Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two largest and most significant cryptocurrencies, wastes literally a country's worth of electricity for the most inefficient payment network in human history. Um, the whole point of this was to try to achieve decentralization, where a cryptocurrency is immune to single points of failure. Um, it actually failed to achieve this with Bitcoin having fallen to centralization by 2014 and Ethereum always having had a central nexus of control. Third point, cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible because otherwise they could be interfered with. This is in practice a charge of fraud. Um, if I pick your pocket from the other side of the world, those are my coins now, you have a heck of a time getting them back. This means that when people are recruited with the Get Rich Quick scheme, that is all promotion of all crypto assets, all crypto derivative schemes, all NFTs, whatever, you can't get your money back when they disappear quietly with all the cash. Cryptocurrency has innovated, it created a new word for this, rug pull. So let's not say that cryptocurrency has contributed nothing. Now, the act of running a computer program, that's going to not be something that you could limit people from doing. However, cryptocurrency is not about technology. I'm a technologist. There is no new technology in Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, or anything like that. It all dates back to the 90s, probably. So it's all about the money. It's about new financial instruments being used in extremely damaging ways. And that is something that can be addressed. The original goal of Bitcoin in 2009 was the money that was free of the influence of governments. Money, this was created by very sincere libertarians who, want, who wanted governments out of their faces. They, um, they wanted governments out of their faces because governments are annoying, they're often stupid. So they thought that they could achieve a form of money which was independent of governments and of society. Um, they originally intended Bitcoin to be an electronic peer-to-peer -peer cash system. They tried very hard to make it work as actual currency, as a medium of exchange for buying things in your life with. It failed really hard all through the 2010s. They eventually gave up on this by about the 2017 bubble, when the um, narrative moved to investment, product, and store of gold, store of value in the manner of gold, digital gold. Um, there was a recent attempt to put cryptocurrency, Bitcoin in particular, as a currency in the country of El Salvador. This turned out to be a resounding failure. Um, the population really, really hates it. The trouble is that cryptocurrency was created to invade regulation. Um, that is its only use case, to evade some sort of government regulation. Now, this can be a good thing. Sometimes governments are wrong. But it's not a sustainable practice for society. And individual cases can absolutely be argued. There are many people who get payments via crypto channels because Government channels are blocked. And these can be positive, but they do not outweigh the large externalities put upon society by other people using cryptocurrency. Regulation-free money attracts people other than people with reasonable libertarian ideals. The other people it's a siren for are crooks. They love money that governments can't get their hands on. So since about 2011, where you could first exchange bitcoins for money with any reliability, 
cryptocurrency has been suffused with crooks and scammers. As I said, they're inventing new words for stealing everyone's money. You can have people who just put up a new investment product. Now, you can't just sell get-rich-quick schemes to people. We have laws about this because that tends to work out really badly. So if you offer investment schemes, you have to do a lot of paperwork. This is socially good because otherwise people get ripped off. So we have regulation around offering investment schemes. Cryptocurrency tends to work around these. Offering, say, highly leveraged products based on complicated financial engineering, then it all goes wrong and your money disappears. Because the transaction is irreversible, you can't get it back. If you even know who was selling the product in the first place. All the use cases for cryptocurrency beyond being an investment scheme are largely hypothetical. It's always coming soon, it'll happen in the future. When someone says though blockchain could, that's a phrase that means blockchain doesn't. If it did, they'd say it did. But they can't say that, so they say it could. It might hypothetically. In the future, in six months, it definitely will and so on, because they can't say it does. So if anyone uses future performance as an excuse for present failure, that doesn't really work. I will not say that it philosophically cannot work in the future, but the burden of proof is 100% on the advocates. It's been 13 years, they should have more to show than they do. The stuff is almost impossible to actually use. It's no more usable in 2022 than it was in 2011. Um, you'll see occasional stories in the press from when a journalist foolishly tries to actually use a cryptocurrency for something, say to buy an NFT as a novelty here. They discover that one mistake and they've lost the 100 quid. Or they can't get the transaction fee. Or something like that happens. Um, it's very, very brittle. It doesn't work properly. And the cryptocurrency world will be sure to tell you it's your fault as the user. You're holding it wrong. The trouble with cryptocurrency as an investment scheme is that it's zero sum. A pile of cryptos is not an investment you can easily generate wealth. It's just a commodity you can trade. You can buy it, hold it, and sell it. No winner gets a dollar out of crypto that didn't come from a loser putting a dollar in. So you can totally make money in crypto. I will never say you cannot but you have to be a better shark than the sharks who built the shark pool. Um, we're talking about an unregulated market. There are some regulated entities dealing in cryptocurrency, but the overwhelming majority of trade is in unregulated offshore casinos. The only regulations they obey are sanctions laws, and even those they're reluctant to. Um, cryptocurrency mining, wasting a country's worth of electricity, was invented to decentralize cryptocurrency. This failed by 2014. As I said, Bitcoin centralized. It's now got three or four large entities running it. Ethereum has two or three large entities doing all the mining, and near 100% of transactions go through one company. Consensus is Infura product. Um, Bitcoin advocates will claim that cryptocurrency mining is green, which is bizarre, or that it incentivizes green energy. It doesn't. In practice, um, it incentivizes restarting new fossil fuel plants to mine bitcoins with. Even non-proof-of-work cryptocurrencies, like not Bitcoin, not Ether, still have all the other problems with crypto. Now, we can't stop people from using computer programs, so but all the ill effects are not technological; they're financial. We can oh, okay, uh, can be very effectively mitigated by financially controlling the flow of money in and out of cryptocurrency. If you have, want to do computer science with blockchains, you can do that. You can't sell this stuff as money. It should be restricted, if not banned entirely, to protect investors from its ill effects.